In today's security conscious media, we often hear the terms network security and information security. Network security is generally accepted as the study of physical computer networks and the prevention of attacks or intrusion from outside hackers. Information security, on the other hand, deals more with what happens inside an organisation, such as industrial espionage, employee data theft or loss and virus attacks. There are many techniques used these days to provide protection from both sides, but the most common starting ground is to break up networks and information into controlled access areas, each of which requires various means of authentication. The most obvious example of this is the login username and password, with most of us juggling many of these for online banking, shopping accounts and credit cards to name but a few. Many of us will also be familiar with further levels of security, such as a PIN or personal questions and quite often we're only asked to provide a couple of letters or numbers that are randomly selected, further protecting the integrity of the password. Online banking in particular has had to take this route as using just a username and password is way too simple. Effectively, only one of the two is very secure as the username is often obvious or simple to arrive at for a determined hacker or fraudster. Other services make use of a physical key, card, dongle or even your mobile phone, which are required to have on you at the time of authentication. Some systems, notably military and high security, will take this to an even higher level and use the stuff of science fiction, retinal and fingerprint scans, bio readouts, voice and facial recognition and the list goes on. Communication is often encrypted to further protect data integrity, both in terms of the network chatter, the network's internal communication as well as the data itself. And we often hear of 128-bit encryption security with online banking. And this is still considered secure, but as systems get faster, there will surely be an increase in the number of bits used. Although it's often a weakness in the algorithm that's exploited by a hacker and not the key length. Once you've achieved access, there are further stages of security designed to control and restrict what you can move in and out of that system. The term firewall is something most of us are familiar with, but very few of us understand what they really do. In layman's terms, they enforce what are known as access policies, which are a set of hard and soft rules governing what is and isn't allowed to alter data. Although firewalls are important in helping stop initial breaches, they can't generally deal with harmful or illegal content such as viruses and all kinds of dangerous scripts. This is where our antivirus type security software takes over. It analyzes data and looks for digital signatures of a threat using databases of known problems as well as intelligent analysis of patterns and activity. It can also effectively study the behavior of software, systems and users to detect anything that's out of the norm, logging it away or passing messages onto a systems auditor or controller to decide what to do with it. It's important to understand that the internet is simply a vast network of networks. When you connect via your local internet service provider, you're not really connecting to the internet as such, you're connecting to a network that is in turn connected to an internet backbone, a powerful mini network which joins other network clusters and so on and so forth. Your simple browser request to view the BBC weather page may have gone through 10 or more networks, passing the page data and graphics back down the line so that your browser can interpret the information and draw that page onto the screen. TCP IP is the language of networks and the internet, and it's this language that you need to learn to control when you're administering network functions and security. Networks work by passing small packets of data around, bite-sized chunks of information that can be readily controlled and easily routed. It really is a marvel sometimes that any data goes anywhere when you look at the complexity involved in just getting a single word onto your screen from a website that could be just next door. With all security considerations, there are trade-offs to manage. A system could theoretically be at one extreme totally secure and at the other totally open. 
but the reality is that actual security lies somewhere in between these two poles. To be totally secure, for instance, a system would have to have zero data traffic in and out that could be manipulated, no power running to it, and probably locked in a vault somewhere as unreachable as the moon. Now, obviously, this wouldn't be a lot of use to anybody. And since we don't want a system to be completely open so that anyone anywhere can do what they want with it, we have to understand that there will inevitably be some level of compromise in any security policy, as with all aspects of life. And it's this level of compromise that causes the vast majority of security issues. Gauging and implementing the required level in so many different areas has obviously become a highly specialised and highly paid field. Any business or organisation must investigate and weigh up where it needs to sit inside that area of compromise and then document those findings as its security policy so that it can be executed and delivered at all levels in a consistent and efficient way. The security analyst job role often encompasses ethical hacking, the modern term for a legally authorised attack on a security system. The idea being to discover its weaknesses, document them and then put a programme into place to stop them being exploited by an illegal attack. So how does a hacker get into a system? Well, the answer is unfortunately via any connection at all that your system has to the outside world. This could be through the internet, networks, USB devices or CDs and DVDs. Wireless and Bluetooth connections as well as mobile phones are particularly vulnerable. A malicious or disgruntled employee, for instance, could upload a security risk into or download information from any system that they have access to. Information security is every bit as important as network security, as statistics show that far more data theft and security breaches happen internally than are ever attributed to an external attack. Why not download our free information pack and IT certification ebook today for more information? Just click on one of the free guide buttons anywhere on our website.